Okay. Good evening, everyone. It's, uh, what is it today? Tuesday, the 2nd of January. So it's my second journal entry. Um, so after looking at the video from last night, I realized that I didn't have the QuickTime set up correctly. I think I only had it set to 720p. So this one hopefully will be a little bit better. It might even be recording at 4K, I'm not sure. Um, I'll need to double check the camera settings. But anyway, I wasn't too worried about it, but I've now set it to maximum. So hopefully I'll have a little bit better uh, resolution out of this one. Um, so what's happened today? Well, one thing I didn't talk about yesterday was the fact that um, in the new year. So for those of you who don't know, uh, a few years ago, I weighed about 109 kilos, I think, and um, which is about 225 pounds or something like that. Um, no, it's more than that. It's 230 pounds. Anyway, um, and I basically had a, an instance or an incident where I felt like I was having a heart attack and that scared the shit out of me. And so I decided that I really needed to do something. I sort of connected it with weight, but I also knew that I was totally out of shape and not going to the gym or doing anything like that. So I, <clears throat> excuse me. So I decided I was going to start going to the gym. I was going to start doing, I, I just decided that I was going to run because it was the most efficient way to burn calories in the fastest way. So I thought if I could just bring my weight down a little bit, I'd start running to help and go to the gym some. So when I started, um, I could literally only run like maybe two minutes and then I had to walk. And then I'd walk for a minute and then I'd run for two minutes and then I'd walk for a minute and then I'd run for a minute and I'd walk for a minute. And I just did that for 5K and it took forever. But I was determined that that was going to be kind of my benchmark as I was just going to work towards doing a 5K, sort of couch to 5K kind of thing. But I was just doing it on the, the treadmill in the gym. Anyway, about 16 months later, I guess, I had lost um, 25 kilos and I was up to the point that I actually ran the Cambridge Half Marathon. But that was the day before the COVID lockdown. So literally the, the half marathon was on the Sunday and the lockdown was on the Monday. Um, so I ran the half marathon, got through it, and, um, and I was really proud of myself. And that was probably the lowest you know, kind of weight I was at as well. Then COVID hit, we were all, you know, at home. And um, there's a there's a, a country lane across the way from where we live. And it's perfect because there's a there's an exact 5K loop. There's a 7K loop and a 10K loop. But it's very, very hilly. Um, so great for training. And during COVID, I basically just went over there and kept, you know, sort of kept my, my foot in, as it were. And, um, and just kept running and running and and, and kept my fitness up pretty much until I caught COVID. And once I caught COVID, I then, it took me, excuse me, I tested positive. There is a point to this whole story, by the way. Um, I tested positive for COVID for like 14 days in a row. Um, and then finally got over it. Had a, I think it was a couple months or a month or so before the lockdown started to, to, to loosen up a little bit and I could go back to the gym again. And the whole time I'd been going to the gym, I had I kept a spreadsheet with everything. I mean, I have a, a Samsung smartwatch that I've, I've used the whole time. I had the original smart, like the very original, the Samsung watch, Galaxy watch version one. Um, and that's what I use for all my training in the beginning. I now have the six. Um, I've upgraded to the new room, but anyway, that's by the by. Um, and anyway, I logged everything in a spreadsheet. So I had how many steps I took every day, how many calories I ate, how much food I ate, how much, you know, did I run? How fast did I run? What was my mile time? What was my 5K time? You know, what was my average pace? And then I had, you know, BMI calculations in there. I kept track of all, like all sorts of things, just completely over-rotated on it weighed myself every day, all that. 
So I had a very good record of, you know, where I was, how, you know, how, how fast I could run, how far I could run at what speed and all that. And when I went back to the gym after COVID, even though I'd been doing a little bit of training and then obviously not when I was ill, but then I went back to the gym and got on the treadmill and realized that I'd lost like a year's worth of fitness just from looking at, you know, sort of my stats. And I was kind of like, wow, okay, this is pretty shit. And so at that point, I kind of, it was really demotivating, I have to say, but I thought, okay, fine. I mean, I knew it was going to have some impact. I didn't realize it was going to be that much. So I started going back to the gym, you know, very slowly. I set some new goals for myself. I started going through, started building back up, building back up. And I'd almost, almost got back to where I was before and probably actually in better shape than I was the first time. Cause I, I think I approached it in a different way. Um, the second time and then I got COVID again and then I only the second time I only tested positive for I don't know five days or something like that so it really wasn't that long but it set me back six months again and that was just again totally totally frustrating and I think we're now up to that was March of this year um, of sorry of 2023 and then so I just had to keep going. So I had to go back, you know, and I'd put some of the weight back on, but I wasn't so, because of my heart was healthy, I wasn't kind of so worried about it, you know, and I, I think the weight was a, a side effect of, of trying to make my heart be healthier. And um, so anyway, started to recover, running, 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 working my way back up slowly again, again, not doing much weight training, just doing mainly cardio and, and running on the treadmill, occasionally on the road outside, maybe doing a park run every once in a while. There's there's a really nice park run here in Tunbridge Wells every Saturday. Um, shout out to the Tunbridge Wells park run. Um, and then in October, I decided that I wanted, there was a little, there was a 5K, a charity 5K for a hospice in the wheel. And they had like a 5K loop, a 10K loop and a half. And I just thought, well, I can go run the 5K because I do that like four days a week, three, four days a week in the gym anyway. And I thought it'd be a bit of fun, raise some money for charity. So I went and did the, the hospice run. What I hadn't really counted on were the hills. And at the start, it was a short uphill and then basically like a long, flat, really gradual hills going out of town. And then you essentially just turn around at two and a half K and then you, you come back. But at the end, there was this section that was probably nearly a cl half a kilometer, maybe three quarters of a kilometer, kilometer maybe even more, um, downhill and pretty steeply downhill. And I was totally fine up until that section. And then as I started running downhill, my knees started to hurt a little bit and and that's sort of normal. Anybody who's run knows you get random pains and stuff like that. So you just kind of, you learn to run through it a lot of times and it just sort of sorts itself out. Oh yeah, I was going to try and take my glasses off for a little while and see what that was like. Um, and anyway, so I, I kind of suffered through it and I just thought, you know, it's one of those things that'll go away. Um, but ever since then, I haven't been able to walk downhill and there's, Again, anybody who knows Tunbridge Wells, there's a massive hill um, in town. And so every time I walk down that hill, my knee starts hurting again. And some days it just hurts. Like even if I just wake up and it's super, super painful and it's a, a sharp pain sort of behind my kneecap. Anyway, I did a bunch of research on the Internet, as anyone does. You go to Google, you look up everything, you see what does Google say? And essentially everything that I read basically said, A, rest it, give it time to recover, you know, whatever damage you've done, if you can give it some time to, to heal, that'll be good. And then the other thing I read is that this is a really common injury among people who are hikers um, and mountain climbers and stuff that, you know, you injure your knees on the way down because it's a, it's, it's a, it's a different movement on your knee and the, 
pretty much the received wisdom on that is you just need to work out more and you need to spend some time in the gym and you need to strengthen um, your leg muscles and, and your tendons and everything else. So I'd sort of made a plan that since I hadn't been in the gym, I'd been super de- demotivated by the COVID hangover, everything else, and then the knee just was on top of it. So essentially, I just said, look, from November, I'm just going to take November and December off. I'm not going to go to the gym. I'm not going to do any exercise. I'm not going to diet. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to be a fat bastard. And I'm going to just start over in January, new year, new routine, everything else. So here we are. Um, we're now January. So yesterday, um, we went on, so my wife and I went on a two hour walk around a local reservoir that we have, which is about a nine K. We did a nine K loop, um, which was quite nice. Not a massive pace. We were just chatting and, and spending some time together and just getting outside and getting some fresh air while it wasn't raining. And what was really good is my knee didn't hurt at all whether we were going up or down or anything it felt fine today so that was a a really good bonus so i've started to go back to the gym so my plan is to do a couple of leg workouts maybe three workouts a week lifting weights and i'll do two leg days and one upper body day and i i'm already feeling that i'll probably sorry is that distracting um i'll probably do two and I'll probably do four days and I'll do two lower and two upper is is probably what I'll end up doing. But I'm not going to run. I think I'm going to give it at least the month of January just to walk. So I am going to walk, but I'm going to do it on the treadmill. And I'm just going to up my pace a little bit faster than I would walk normally um, and kind of see how that goes. And I did some weights. So I did some weight training today, went for a walk, just walked for half an hour on the machine. Um feels a little bit sore but that's okay that's kind of normal and look we'll kind of see how it goes so that's the work outside that i'm doing as well so this is one of my other changes um for the year obviously this this journal is one going back to the gym and sort of trying to rebuild my fitness and trying to fix my knee is another the other thing that i'm trying to do as well is along with the knee um i've got feels like a bit of arthritis or a bit of tendonitis or something starting as well. And look, this isn't meant to be like some middle-aged guy complaining about his health problems. It's just literally, this is the reason I'm doing this stuff. And I probably, I'll mention it again later as we progress and we see how it has an impact. So I think it's important just to set the sort of background on what's going on. Um, But I've listened to a lot of people. There's been a lot of sort of nutritionists and doctors and you know famous people like Jordan Peterson and stuff who do the carnivore diet who've said essentially it's just an elimination diet so eliminate everything but but meat so that you get rid of all the preservatives and all the everything and anything that's in your food sugar additives you know um, highly processed vegetable oils all that sort of stuff hydrogenated fats and all that and literally just strip it back to bare do that for like a month or six weeks and then very gradually and and see how you are. And a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people anecdotally, I'm not a doctor, but anecdotally people I've talked to who've done it have also had really amazing experiences where, you know, they've, they were pre-diabetic or they were diabetic and they're not anymore. And they've had all sorts of ailments sort of heal and their skin's got better and IBS has gone away and all this other stuff. So I thought I'd give it a try. A side effect of that is I might potentially lose a bit of weight with it as well, which will be cool if I can do that too. But that's not the goal. The goal is to see if I can get rid of the sort of tendonitis, arthritis kind of stuff that's going on and see if the diet has any impact on that. So that's going on at the same time. And um, just randomly today in the office, um, I work, I work in a co-working space in Tunbridge Wells, and it's sort of for creatives and and freelancers and things like that. And I started talking to a lady in the lunchroom who I've seen around, but I've never really had any chats with. And she sort of saw that I was, you know, she saw what I was eating, and I was eating these, um, these basically um, crispy 
sort of pork strips like the pork fat but it's been made really crispy and it's on the diet because it's totally natural and um she saw me eating that and was asking you know what i was eating and i said well i'm on this crazy diet and blah 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 and she went oh my god i'm on that diet as well she's like i've been doing it for two years it's amazing so that was really cool to meet someone um who also does it and turns out she's actually a nutritionist and um and like a you know she's she's a um a dietitian and like properly educated and trained in that as well so it was really cool to meet somebody who's doing it and now i have somebody i can talk to about it and not annoy my wife and everyone else in the family and all of you if you're listening um and and not annoy myself so it'll be nice to at least have one person to talk to about it so that's one thing that happened today so that was cool so there's a little bit of background um about what's going on this year where are we okay um so that's all that um what else did i want to talk about i think i mentioned um i've i didn't do quick time correctly last time um and i've redone the settings so hopefully it'll be better the other thing i have is um, before i go too far while we're talking about camera stuff i have this i don't think it'll will it focus on it no okay i thought it might be clever and focus on it but it won't um but all it is is it's a mini tripod that i can put my phone into and i can set it up like that and what I can do is I can connect that um, if I use another tool. Uh, QuickTime won't do two cameras, but there are other tools that can. And I could set that up so that I could actually have sort of an A camera, which is the one I'm talking to now, and then have a B camera on the side, which just from a separate angle, which would actually make it a little bit more interesting in the edits later because we could have two points of view. So it'd look a little bit more like a YouTube video or an actual documentary where you kind of have different angles, of people talking. And that's definitely something that I want to learn how to do. So um, look out for that. So now that I have that, I'll be playing around with that. So hopefully I might try using a different tool other than QuickTime after this one tonight. Um, I might try Riverside or... There's a couple of different options and tools. So I want to try all the different ones and see what works best. And then hopefully I'll be able to settle on something after, I don't know, maybe the end of the month or something. And I'll then I'll just settle into a routine and, and just be able to come in and go boom and just do some recording. So that's that. <clears throat> um, what else? Um well, don't know if you know, depends, um, but I, I run a podcast called The Creatives with AI Podcast, and um, the clue's in the name. We talk about the impact of um, AI on the creative industries and, and what's happening now and what might happen in the future, particularly for people like you know designers and photographers and musicians and copywriters and all that sort of thing. And one of the one of the things I want to do this year is is obviously expand that out into into other ones, and I th I think I may have talked about that last night, but I also want to talk about a whole load of other stuff, like nutrition, or public sector, or I don't know whatever, um, reggae music in the UK. Like I don't know, it could be anything, and. I can't really do that on any of the AI podcasts because those are very narrowly focused and I really want to be mindful of the people who are in the audience. So, excuse me. So I do want to start my own super secret podcast. Um, again, I don't plan on... I, I, don't, I don't care about monetization and I don't care about making millions off of it. I just like to have chats with people and I really... I like to learn from people. And um, so anyway, so look out for that. So um, the lady that I spoke to today, who is the nutritionist and all that, I'm not going to say her name yet, but I will say her name later. 
But anyway, she's agreed to come on the podcast. And actually, she has her own podcast about health and fitness and nutrition. And she asked me to sort of keep track of what I'm doing in my diet and how I feel and all that. So I might have a few clips in here where I talk about my diet and how I'm feeling and how I'm getting on. And then I can use those and share those with her for something that we're doing later. But the idea is, is sort of mid, mid February, sort of six weeks in, I'll kind of review how do I feel now? Physically, how do I feel? How, you know, am I struggling? Is it really difficult? Because literally all I can eat is meat. Um, I eat meat, I eat fish, I can eat seafood, so I can eat prawns and shrimp and, and that sort of thing. I can eat particularly oily fish is very good. I can have chicken and pork and and beef and all that. I'm not supposed to really have any dairy, although I can have a teeny bit of dairy if I if I really want some like milk in my coffee. I really I still like milk in my coffee, so really the only thing I do is in the morning, my very first coffee in the morning, I have a little bit of milk in my coffee. And that's it. And then the rest of the day, I just drink black coffee and black tea like a savage. Um, So, yeah. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. And then at that sort of check in point, um, I'm going to go on her podcast and we're going to have a discussion about, you know, do I feel any different? You know, what have I noticed and all that sort of stuff. So that should be interesting. And I can share that um, later as well. But, yeah, so I have my sort of working title for my personal podcast is going to be fake smart because that's pretty much how I consider myself. I know a little bit about a lot of things, but I'm not an expert in anything. And so basically I'm fake smart. So um, that should be, that should be kind of interesting. So we'll see what happens with that. And what else? Oh, I've had some really good responses to the education with AI. So part of the with AI Um, FM thing that I'm doing as well. I've had three people reach out to me today saying that they'd like to come on the podcast. And they were talking about the creatives with AI podcast, but actually what I'm going to do is put them into the um, education with AI and put them in there as the as the first, you know, sort of starting episodes to get that podcast up and running and off the ground. And if I can get sort of three or five episodes recorded, then I'll launch that and just so people will have something to listen to and i'm in the process of there are two or three of the people that i've talked to would be excellent candidates to be a host of that show and um so that'll be really good and and what i really would like to do now is i'm i've got to try and find a sponsor for that and if i can find a sponsor then i'm off and and i'm off to the races and same with the women Women with AI, the women with AI, I have several very good contacts who I'm pulling together to see if together we can think of someone who would be really good. And and I'm going to let them sort of help guide me on that. And I think that we may know also some potential sponsors for that one. I may actually get a sponsor for that one quicker than I do for the education one. But I've watched a I've watched a lot of videos. And, and one of the things I've realized is, is that. I'm biased towards action and I've watched a lot of recently, you know, filmmakers and people talking about when they started getting into doing more film and video stuff and what was their biggest regret. And most of them say their biggest regret is that they didn't just do it. Like just get started. If you sit and wait until you think, you know, everything you will have wasted eight months of you just having experience. So here we are. This is part of the reason why I'm just doing this. You know, this is the best way to learn is to do it. Um, so I kind of feel the same way about those other podcasts. It's like I have the time it, it doesn't take now. It doesn't take, you know, much time or effort for me to do the work. I use AI tools and actually the more I use the AI tools, then the, the better value I get out of what I pay for them. So it only makes sense to do it. So watch this space for some new podcasts in women with AI and some new podcasts with in education. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but maybe education with AI. Um, and I'll just mention it on here, but that's not the point of this, but it is part of my life and it's part of what I'm doing. So I'm sure I'm going to talk about it. Um, and I think back to school tomorrow, all the kids are back to school tomorrow, which means school run starts again. So I'll be up early in the mornings and, 
for those of you who don't know, I ride a motorcycle and, and I, um, I take my son to school because it's a lot faster on the school run if my wife has to do it then you know she, it, it it takes her an hour to do the round trip and it takes me 15 minutes to get him to school and then I have to go into town anyway so it just makes sense the only time is if it's really bad weather then usually she'll take him anyway TMI uh, I think that's everything for today uh, thanks very much if anybody's watching thanks very much if no one's watching that's okay Dave, you're doing a great job. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.